Yeah. Uh huh. It's the first. It's the first. It's the first episode. It's the first. Might be your last. But I'm looking for my first. First episode podcast. Welcome to first episode podcast. A cherry popping debrief of your next binge worthy television series. I'm your host, Mota Maurice. I'm Atara G. And I'm guest host, Rod Shawa. Today we're cherry popping Hit Monkey. In New York City, Monkey finds a path to escape his life of killing, while Bryce attempts to repair the damage to those he wronged in life. Superhero and action are the genres. And this was. An interesting one. I'm like, Raj has an interesting I choice think this of was show. Raj, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a Marvel series and it's definitely on the bloody violence side. Wasn't expecting that off the top, but it's action packed and adventurous. I it's an say. animation. Yeah, yeah. It's we it's also um influenced by anime. Mm-hmm. Right, I think so. It seems like it. I, I can't say for certain, but the style, uh, especially some of the the fighting scenes or the bloody scenes, do seem uh, very anime inspired, and that's kind of something we do see more in in Japanese animation as well as a uh, less shying away from kind of extreme violence. Yeah. Well, the the star of the show is a a, a Japanese snow monkey. <laughs> that's it's fair. A, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a they call it it's a Japanese snow makat. Which is a snow monkey, which is a really, it's a gentle creature, displays frequent social interactions, and they are very seldom aggressive. Well, have they seen this show? <laughs> <laughs> so what was your first impression, Zatar? Um, I was, leave it to Raj was my first impression. I didn't know, I, I really was not I did not know what to expect. I didn't know how the how the monkey was gonna play into this. Yeah. But it was good. I enjoyed it. And I'm looking well, I'll save that for later. Well, I'm looking to watching more, but I I really did enjoy it. As 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 it got bloodier and bloodier, I looked over to Atara. I was like, this is your kind of show. <laughs> I, just, I know. I like to tell myself like I'm a pacifist in life. But I'm bloodthirsty on screen. <laughs> <laughs> Did the blood do it for you, Raj? I mean, see, I didn't pick it because it was uh, violent. I, I actually too didn't know what to expect. I mean, it, it, I was picking, I was looking at some shows to to choose. The Acolyte was also on the list, so you know, I, I enjoy this kind of. Um, uh, I was just going to say nerd, but kind of this geek culture um, exploration, whether it be Marvel, Star Wars, what have you. I really enjoy. Um, some of the more deeper dives into them. I've never really watched a Marvel show before, but the fact that this was an animation, I think, uh, drew me in in mm-hmm. some ways because I think I like Marvel. i just not a huge, like, these whole cinematic universes and over in Gar... You know, they're fine. I enjoyed the series, but I didn't watch all 27 movies of the Thanos whatever, you know? <laughs> it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't need to happen. Yeah. Um, so I think... I, I really enjoyed exploring that depth in a more, I don't know, contained environment with a single single character. So I, I think You don't that's, like the commercialized Marvel. I don't know. Exactly. I don't like the commercialized Marvel. And that's why, I, you know, we t- we've talked about the boys briefly before. I, I kind of enjoy that because it really plays on that. It's, it's trying to appear like the commercial superhero movie, but if you watch it for a minute, it's definitely not. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I think that's what I really enjoy, that kind of dichotomy of there. Yeah. What I'm about to say does no justice for this podcast, but from time to time, it's really awesome going into a show or a movie not knowing anything about it. Yeah. That's what my experience was with Bird Box. I was telling you, mm. I just joined SAG, and you know, as a SAG member, you can go see screenings and things like that. And I took Candace Kane. Remember Candace Kane sure, yeah. from the Late Night Experiment? I took her, and I knew nothing about it. All I knew that it was a free screening. We was gonna get in there, and that made the experience amazing True. for me. You know, in hindsight, it really wasn't that many, like intense scenes it was a okay it was an okay movie but if i knew something about it or if i saw a trailer it wasn't gonna be as good because i was sitting there with like what is going <laughs> on you know so it was kind of like that with this here 
We I didn't read the log line or anything. Rod selected like boom. Let's just get into it. So it had that that effect when we see when we see this action and the the killing and the blood and the drama and stuff like that. I, I feel that way too because I I just recently saw the trap in theaters, um, the M Night Shyamalan movie. Shyamalan, um, lama, 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 lama. <laughs> and uh, and they I you know at previous movies uh, before I saw it there was trailers for it and you know it didn't ruin the movie sometimes as trailers do. But it definitely gave me more information than I needed um, in a way that you kind of took a potential plot point away from me. Like you could have let my mind kind of have an imagination of like, oh, but now that you've revealed it in the trailer, it's like, oh, I, don't, I don't, that's not going to happen anymore. Yeah. But they often do too much. They do. The tra- they sh- you know oh. what they do in the trailers? They show you the best scenes. Yeah. Sometimes it's the whole movie. Yeah. yeah. For yeah. example, the Ninja Turtles, the Michael Bay Ninja Turtle movies. Okay. The tr- all the best scenes are in the trailers. It was ridiculous. I'm sitting there watching a the movie like I already seen this. Yeah, <laughs> Motown's very. No, upset. you were very passionate about that. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is, is. I didn't expect it, but exactly. I get it. I get That's it. That's my childhood. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, they they just. It's. They just take away the excitement. The discovery. The discovery, yeah. Yeah. Hollywood, if you're listening, can you work (laughs) on this? Please add it to your performance objectives. And it's maybe they're overcompensating, like you said, Raj, with um, Wandland. Mm. They forced you to watch a trailer on Apple TV Plus because we can assume that they didn't do a good job with that first episode. So... Maybe they're just overcompensating with movies sometimes because they feel like they're not getting the right audience or that not enough people are watching. I don't know what the strategy is, but it's it's too much. Maybe it's the audience's fault. Maybe. Because it often is. Yeah, we want to be spoon fed everything. We don't want to have to just give us the highlights. I mean, good grief. Sometimes I'm on Instagram and people don't even want to watch a 30 second video. They're just like, what happened? I don't want to watch this. Tell me what happened. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I will say, I think, uh, yeah, I don't know if it was widely done, um, but something that maybe they could go back to as a solution is shooting a little extra footage that, because they're used to make trailers out of stuff that you'd never actually see in the movie. Um, and maybe that's not, I don't know, maybe that's uh, not representative of the movie, but at the same time, it's inter- you're showing me what you can do. You're showing me the characters. Like, you know, make me a mini small, a short film that's out of this trailer. actually an excellent idea, because remember we were watching... Shogun or something. We were watching something where we, at the beginning was like giving us what happened in the last episode. And it was a scene that didn't show up in the last oh, episode. It was uh, the, the boys. It was the boys. Uh, and we we're like, that didn't happen. I'm like, yeah, it didn't, it didn't happen for us, but it happened. And they're using that to move the story forward as opposed to having the scene in the actual show. Yeah. I think that was like a, they just ran out of room for the episode and they just let's just put it in a preview of the upcoming episode for sure that's an assumption but it worked what and you know i think marvel kind of started that with their trilogy and then kind of abdicated it for just like they did the post credit scene everybody knows that's what they do mm. and yet they started out more impactful oh you got the collector you got these other more meaningful scenes and then what was the doctor strange one? Oh, he's got a third eye and he's in the middle of new york city and everybody just thinks he's a freak like what what, how, what that doesn't tell me anything that's yeah. just a cool cool scene but like yeah they used to um provide a little more context of what the next movie is going to be i think as voters mm. and as audiences we have to demand more so as an audience of entertainment we have to demand more sure just like we demand we need to be demanding more from those we put in office absolutely <laughs> no it's right that's yeah. right <laughs> That, that that would insinuate that Hollywood has given us power and they ain't trying to do that. <laughs> so let's get into some of these themes. I'm interested in hearing your theme, Atara, when it comes to Hitmonkey. Yeah, so my theme for Hitmonkey really was intuition. Mm. And, um, you know, when we, we'll just jump forward to when the uh, Bryce gets to the mountains with the snow monkeys and the snow monkeys just he, Bryce has been shot up. He's about to die and the snow monkeys save him and throw them in the sauna and bring him back to life. 
And they're all just loving on him, taking care of him, you know, chewing up food and spitting it in his mouth. And Bryce is just like, mmm, yum. <laughs> 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 well, he, that is what he did have an issue with it at first, but well, yes. he, yeah, he quickly adapted to that sort of <laughs> he treatment. Did. He did. And then there's this one monkey who is like not down with it at all. You know, he's in the pool across from him, glaring at him. He's like, "Why do we like this guy?" And you know, I look at that monkey and I'm like, "That is the monkey tribe's intuition." And none of the other monkeys were listening to this one monkey. So if we think of us as people, one of the things that we've lost is the ability to listen to our in intuition and to understand when our intuition is speaking to us, even the willingness to trust our intuition we've lost. And so we see through the illustration of what happened to this monkey tribe when we don't listen to our intuition. That's really great because I actually I actually noticed that as well, but I didn't have a, a word or a theme to put on it because in addition to that, when Bryce is getting up his strength fighting the snowmen he's created, um, the the monkey that is having monkey the the title monkey of this show is watching him and having issues with him, like being fearful of of all he sees, like shooting mm -hmm. the snowmen and chopping their heads off and whatever. Um, he is, you know, exactly. He's intuiting what he is. And Bryce even says, it's like, you're different than all the other monkeys. You know, you know who I, I, am. I am. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or what I am. Exactly. exactly. He, he, um, he picks up on exactly that intuition of what Bryce is in a way that his whole tribe hasn't seen. Like, I think his tribe has the right idea to nurse him to health, but they don't have an idea of why. They're just kind of like doing it because, oh, someone's in need. We need to help him without thinking about who this person is. What are they going to do? Uh, I think we've seen it. I can't think of a good example, but in Disney movies where they nurse kind of the, the human character to help and then the other humans come and then kill everyone else. Maybe Pocahontas, maybe um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think Mulan, maybe. I'm yeah. thinking there's an example where there's a character nursed to health and then it turns out bad for the people that actually mm -hmm. helped this character. Um, so yeah, that's a great that's a great notice of, of theme. It's going to segue into Motown's theme, but um, I picked up on this one just because intuition has been has played a big role in my life. Like I never when I was in my 20s and stuff, I never trusted my intuition. And it was until maybe about my mid 30s when I started doing mindfulness. I hate to drop the buzzword, but I started practicing mindfulness and I just really realized I already know the right way to go. I'm already I'm just not listening to myself. And so, um, yeah, and intuition and discernment was if you're not listening to your intuition and you're not practicing discernment um you can get wiped out like the snow monkey tribe <laughs> absolutely no it's true and those are essentially superpowers that no one wants to use anymore at all um you know my theme is i'm kind of like putting couple things together to, to get my theme because I'm recognizing kindness and I'm also seeing the consequences of kindness and basically it's kindness without discernment is what, what's happening here and it's what happens to the the snow monkey tribe is so disheartening so disheartening and it just kind of it kind of reminds me of what happened to so many indigenous people around the world you know, letting invaders come into their land out of kindness, and out trust, of kindness, yeah. and then they they re, the the invaders respond back with trickery, and and killing smallpox. and and massacres and mm -hmm. and, and yeah, smallpox and genocide. So it's it's just kindness is it can be lethal to you at times um, if you don't have a level of discernment to to separate yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why in these in tribes you have a council of elders, you know, and some counselors, some one counselor, their strength may be discernment. Another person, it may be intuition, and they work together as a council to protect the tribe wow. or the group of people. Oftentimes, or, the invaders kill those them first. They're the first ones yeah. to go. Yeah. 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 Well, and kind of maybe it's the outdated idea of an alpha rather than a more committee type idea right. of like, let's mm -hmm. let's, you know, sit and talk about this and get everyone's ideas yeah. rather than like I lead. You want to lead? Then fight me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it was very, and even when the white the um, snow monkeys got wiped out, it was for throwing a snowball. Right. Yeah. They didn't have to gun them down. They could have just rode off. I think there's probably a lot of parallels in history to that, where oh, like, right. like oh. villagers or, or what have you attacked with very minor um, spears, uh, you know, or, so. or rocks or yeah. something, yeah. and then responded with gunfire yeah. or, th- or 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 um, arrows or what just, have you. They decided in that moment that they didn't value the lives of the monkey and they didn't deserve to yeah. live. One hundred percent. They were even laughing off the snowing, the snow fight, like being thrown snow at them. The guys that killed the monkeys, they were just like, ha ha ha, stupid monkeys, and then just. Bah, 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 bah. Like, just yeah. take them out as if, like, that was, like, nor- it was normal for them. Yeah. They, it was just very automatic, in fact. Yeah. I mean, there's so many places I would love to take this conversation, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> but there's so many metaphors in that one scene. Makes you know? sense. Yeah. 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 And this all started, you know, if they would have just listened to Monkey and reject Bryce. They could have still healed him, but he was healed. He didn't need to continue to hang out. He was healed. He was well enough to go on his way. Yeah, he even mentioned like this monkey day spa. So like, <laughs> yeah. it's like, he... you know, they could have knocked him unconscious, blindfolded him and took him several miles from where they were and just left him. And he would have woke up and had to go on about his business. Uh, so so if anyone could could get some lesson here if you're helping somebody or you're rehabilitating somebody to the point where they are where they can function on their own then it's time for them to go yeah and make sure they, they can't go. find you yeah they can't come back <laughs> no seriously like you got to go like you if you if somebody um asks for help a tar and they need to stay in your place for like a week so they can make some extra money once they make that extra money they gotta go i've overstayed my welcome we're not gonna talk about me <laughs> But, <laughs> but that's another that's another podcast session. <laughs> but seriously speaking, like people can't be overstaying their welcome. They got to go. They got to go. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, I can't. I can't disagree more. Really. I mean, I can't agree more. Actually, because it's true. There is a a. It's it's kind of that self reliance piece, you know. After a certain point, people do need help, and it's great that people can help each other you know you don't see it enough in this world um but i think there comes a time where we all have to stand on our own at some point Mm -hmm. and yeah once that time has expired once that help has been achieved Mm -hmm. there's really no need to to hang around and i think that is i I didn't really think about that but i do think bryce was uh, a bit overstaying his welcome at that point in Mm -hmm. the in the show because he had he had been healed i don't know if he knew what kind of danger he was bringing to this kind of isolated snow monkey tribe but all the same he knows his world and that's that's the world of destruction yeah, yeah. well if he knows he's he's a hitman and he knows what he did he knows they're going to be looking for him so whether they could find him or not i would think he would say it's i'm a dangerous person this is a safe place it's not good for me to be in this safe place mm-hmm. but his character doesn't seem to be one that thinks that far ahead no well i mean i think he would have to as a hitman i don't know if it's just the weakness Mm -hmm. or just literally he just did not think about it because he's bleeding and leaving footsteps they very obviously showed that Mm -hmm. um occurring in the in the scenes as he's like trying to get to this monkey tribe um so it's obvious they're going to find him Um, so yeah, it does seem like either he just didn't have his mind about him because he's obviously a very good hitman, um, very professional, and yet at the same time did not see the danger or didn't care about the danger yeah. that he was bringing on to those people that were helping him. Or maybe he was being selfish because he was being selfish. This is a respite from his day job, which we saw, um, when he did his first kill, how depressed he got afterwards, you know? For so, sure. Yeah. Hmm. And your theme, you had some thoughts? Well, to I was say, just going to say that kind of ties right into what I, what I picked out as a theme. seems like a weird word to use as a theme, but defense mechanisms really was a strong um, 
I mean, throughout this episode, the sarcasm, the sarcastic jokes, um, even to the, you know, when we get to those more uh, dramatic moments where uh, he's telling Monkey, uh, don't pick up the gun in anger because you'll never put it down. And he's like, or you can end up like me. But rather than saying something meaningful or vulnerable, he says, an all around an awesome guy, you know, uh-huh. so he, he diffuses any moment of potential connection with this um sarcastic detachment um and it seems to be his only real way of coping like i mean talking to the guy uh the guy who's driving him in the car who doesn't say a word and he's like you seem like you come from a good home really loving the back and forth we're having so everything for him is just a ironic detachment and i i noticed that even to the point of how he does assassinations because he didn't assassinate the politician by looking down the scope and pulling the trigger. No, he had five mechanically operated guns that shot like, I think 10 bullets total um, from him hitting a button on a tablet. Like I see that as him, like he can no longer, maybe he never did, but he can no longer look down that scope and pull that trigger because he is having seriously conflicted thoughts. And you see it again when everybody's looking at the news of, of who he's, he's hit and everybody's like in, you know, in tragedy and sadness, looking at it on the subway. And he's like looking over, like, you know, you feel like a sense of pride at first. Cause like I did that. And then it's like, Oh, nobody's happy about this. I guess I'm super isolated. I'm not like these people like i've killed someone they loved i can't really there's no one that really understands me i think ironically the only person that does understand me as we talked about is monkey and monkey hates him yeah. like monkey hates him with all his being mm-hmm. because he knows who he is and it's a really good observation yeah and you know the fact that monkey hates this guy so much because this guy bought death and destruction on his tribe and now monkey they're they've partnered up. They're bound together. They're bound yeah, together. they are. They are almost. I would say spiritually bound. They're maybe spiritually it's a. Bound. Maybe it's a. Um, uh, maybe we need to learn more about monkey. Is what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's some darkness there that maybe solidifies their bond because right now it just seems like monkey's in a bit of a tough spot. Mm-hmm. He was the one that no one believed. It, he was. He knew the truth. Um, all his village got killed. And now he's stuck with this guy he, as far as we know, hates. So, uh, yeah, it does seem like maybe there's something we don't know about Monkey's past, or maybe it's just simple bad luck. But well, I'm curious. Why was Monkey able to pick him out out of that tribe, which was fairly sizable? Mm. Why was Monkey the only one able to pick him out? Yeah. You know what was really funny, though? Was when Monkey had come back from watching Bryce build all the snow, kill all the snowmen, and he was like, "He killed them all." And then the little baby monkey was like, "They were just snowmen." <laughs> <laughs> so funny. First snowmen, then us. He was yeah. like, "Just snowmen, dude." <laughs> Huge entertainment potential. Huge entertainment potential. Huge enter- for me, at least. I mean, I find this this story is going to have the depth. Raj that you're looking for um, it's gonna have the bloodthirstiness that I'm looking for and I really like the art style I really like Monkey's kind of silent brooding character and Bryce he's entertaining as much as, as a jerk he is he's entertaining he's a hot mess if anyone needs intensive therapy it's him but I think this is gonna be good how many chairs are you giving it Four. I'm going to give it four. I think I'm going to give this three and a half cherries also. I I agree with everything you're saying. but And the, I think you both are finding more depth in this show than I am, which is why you probably will both rate it higher than me in terms of cherries. There is a decent amount of episodes available. And in my mind, I, I like to have some type of scope on where it might go. I'm not sure where <laughs> this is going to go. So I guess that's a good thing. But I'm just wondering, like, there's at least 20 episodes available right now. So I'm just, I don't know. My mind is just like, 
what are they going to be able to do with 20 episodes? Like, is he going to fulfill his quest and go to another quest? Or they're just going to go on this long journey of trying to get revenge. Revenge, which is a big theme that we didn't discuss. But that's essentially what this show is about. Mm -hmm. Like, is this just going to be all about revenge? So, so there's a lot for me to discover. It definitely has potential. But I have a lot of question marks. I, I don't want to go back into themes, but you do say revenge. But I will say part of that, I think, is is supposed to be justice. Like, it, it is justice and revenge. Like, for Monkey, much more justice. He's trying to get back, um, get revenge for what, um, well, you could call it justice, too. <laughs> I see that's why I, I think they're they're combined, because he was wronged. That's why I consider it justice. Maybe it's not justice to to kill people. Um, it's certainly not in a legal sense. But at least in the context of this show, um, Bryce was wronged by someone on this thing. Maybe it's not a good thing that he's a hitman, but he was double-crossed mm -hmm. on this job. So that's his sense of trying to get justice back. Whereas Monkey, just trying to get justice for the tribe he lost, the tribe that was slaughtered. Um, and I think one of the... Um, one of the tie-ins to justice in general, and I think it'll probably come back in the show, given uh, Olivia Munn, the, the character, the, the actress who plays Akiko, you know, has a, like, I think she's third build on the show, so she must have a larger part in this. So they must be, even though the politician they supported is dead, she must have a larger part. And the only reason I say justice is because for her and that politician that was killed, um, they made it a clear point to talk about social justice, mm -hmm. which was the uh, aspects of attacking the military and the royal family in the same speech and a 20% tax increase on corporations. So you're seeing kind of these uh, dichotomies of justice and revenge kind of come together, at least in my mind. Mm. I think it's justice for Monkey, mm. revenge for Bryce. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, um, sometimes the price of justice is going to be the death of others. Yes. Or the cost of justice. For sure. Absolutely. And personally... That might just be okay. In the context of this show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. In the context of this show. <laughs> we accidentally saw a snippet of another episode. Not a lot, but it alluded to the evolution of Monkey. Potential evolution. Well, but I think Monkey is going to set out... I think we have 20 episodes because Monkey is going to set out on his path to seek justice and this kind of plays into what you were saying Raj how does that intersect with the social justice that the politician and his daughter were seeking like those paths have to cross at some point so maybe I don't know does monkey become a hitman for social justice or something Maybe in seeking his own justice, he gets his justice, but then stays on the path of this, of being a hit monkey for some reason that we don't know about. Yeah. I mean, yeah. in my mind, it's just like, how long is he going to be a hit monkey? You know, it's like the guy from, um, who used to make drugs out of the trailer parked in the desert. Oh, uh, you're talking about uh, Breaking Bad? Breaking Bad. The chemistry teacher. I Eisenhower. Eisenhower. He started making drugs just to pay bills. But he quickly started enjoying it. And it was like became his thing. Like he could have got out. Put b many opportunities to get out. But he did it because he ended up enjoying it. And maybe, maybe that happens to Monkey. For sure. It's a potential. It's a potential. I mean, that that when you mentioned the how many episodes, it made me think is like, oh, maybe they're just going to like, uh, this is going to be the B plot or the, the overarching B plot of the whole series while they do like smaller adventures. Like they do on cartoon shows sometimes. Yeah, it's yeah. like, today's adventure is this. But yeah. you know, there's the overarching whatever. I'm not sure if that's what they're going for, um, yeah. but, but it's possible that they're like kind of going to... Um, expand it out or pad it out by just having like mini adventures small small crimes they solve and i just hope that it doesn't drag out because of that and that's why it's at a three and a half for me that makes sense because that that if they have that approach it could potentially drag out yeah. but maybe maybe not 
how, how sure. about you? Where do you stand in terms of entertainment potential in cherries? Um, I think I'll give it a, a four as well because I really, I really enjoyed it. I really appreciate the uniqueness of the uh, animation style. Um, I, I'm not like a, a glutton for for violence and blood, but I do certainly appreciate when it's not shied away from because I think it's it's just reality i think that's one of the one of the more appealing like I, I i have told you i think on this on this show that i i think the boys is hard for me to watch because of yeah. how graphic and brutal it is i think maybe i'm a little more okay with it because it's a cartoon um in this case but but yeah i'm not one to to like don't let it take. be don't let it be apes hurting each other right, well, that's that's right. yeah this is so interesting to me if it's violence in cartoons and stuff i i can tolerate it but like you, um, what's the show you just mentioned? Boys. The boys, boys yeah. yeah. You can tolerate that. I can tolerate it, but some of it is so gratuitous. You like, can tolerate so... that just fine, but don't <laughs> don't put on a Planet of the Apes where the apes are hurting each other. She can't even yeah, finish Yeah, we, we tried to watch Planet of the Apes the other night. And Dawn of the Planet, Dawn the of recent Planet one. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and when the gorillas show up and they start fighting, I was like, I can't. We have to turn it off. Is that super graphic in like violence and bloodiness? No, it's not. Oh, okay. She just doesn't like the act. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. And also my dog died three weeks ago. So I'm in a little bit of a sad Jesus, place yeah. now. So like, you know, animals fighting with each other is kind of triggering. Makes Especially sense. since gorillas are so much larger than these other species of monkeys. Mm. Yeah. The domination aspect yeah. of the domination. It's just like, aspect, why do we yeah. have to... And and yes, we're looking at gorillas and monkeys fighting each other, but human beings we do this to each other too. So of why course. do we have to be so violent with each other? Well, and I've never I haven't seen that many of the Planet Apes and Planet of the Apes movies, but isn't that kind of the point how essentially even if it's not us, it essentially devolves into us exactly. when you start like, "Oh, we need to organize this society in a certain way." You know. Well, I, that's what we were watching when I said, why can't we just live like this? Why can't we just gather <laughs> herbs and cook over a fire? Why do we have to industrialize? Because we didn't start, all this hub hub didn't start until we started industrializing. Yeah. It's true. I mean, I, I don't disagree. Yeah. I mean, I could probably talk about that forever. But, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for the specs? Let's do it. Hit Monkey released on November 17th, 2021. It is streaming on Disney Plus and Hulu. The average duration per episode is 25 minutes. There are two seasons with 10 episodes per season with an IMDb rating of 7.8. Bonus info, as of July 15th, 2024, neither... Hulu or the makers of the Hit Monkey have officially confirmed a season three, so they're, they're I think they're basically trying to see how season two does before they confirm if there's going to be a season three. That's pretty much all we know right now. But you know, it's a great accomplishment these days to even get two seasons, and 100%. they're not cheating. There's like ten episodes. Ten per episodes, se- yeah. Yeah, a lot of shows be cheating with seven, eight, which is fine. There's no, you know, in this day and air and era, you don't have to have a certain amount to equate to a season. But twenty episodes, two seasons, that's quite an accomplishment, which means that it was received well by the fans after the first season. Yeah, which gives you more reason to want to look into more episodes, but. Season three is still up in the air, and we'll see what happens with that. Those are our thoughts on Hit Monkey. Thank you for trusting us. We are honored to be your first. For information about this podcast and more, please visit MotownMaurice.com.